Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Saturday night broadcast of the On Air Advocate. We're at the On Air Advocate, we look to provide education, support, and empowerment for all of those with different abilities, mental and medical illnesses, and their caregivers. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I'm the host and producer of the On Air Advocate. And we both here are super excited that you guys have decided to spend part of your Saturday night <laughs> with us here. Um, at the On Air Advocate, or if you're watching this on the replay, thank you so very much. If you think that this broadcast could be helpful or beneficial for anybody, please show us some love and hit the share button as well. Now, for everyone who has been watching this whole entire week, we have been covering or organizational tools and strategies for caregivers. And all of us know that as caregivers, the best way to care for our loved ones is to make sure that we're organized. And so with that said, I am super, super excited to welcome back our very, very favorite pharmacist, as well as health educator. And also she is the host of her own podcast, the Pharmacist Answer Podcast, Cynthia Hendricks. From Georgia. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> I am so excited because all week long, you know, we have had people on with so many different ideas from using like mind mapping strategies, you know, to like the body check journal, which is a journal that keeps things. And you're bringing that other element of looking at different digital applications for keeping medication straight, synchronization of medications through the pharmacies, mm -hmm. and many things that we should watch for that way, mail order options that sort of thing. So I feel like this is awesome that we're doing it on Saturday night because it's kind of like that last layer to yeah. all the things that we covered. Because after you've done all this and you've organized it and written it out, well, you got to get all the medications now. <laughs> How are you yeah. going to that out to organize it? Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome again. Thanks. I'm so type A personality. So like the organization stuff just kind of like <laughs> energizes me to be like, we're going to get it all together. I promise. <laughs> so where would you like to begin? Because I know that you grabbed, you know, and found out info on different apps, you know, that are available to families. And, you know, after this broadcast, we will drop below the names of some of these things. So if you're not able to write it down while you're listening in, just know that you'll find it below the feed. Um, mm. as well. So, and if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them down in comment too. Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of times when we think about medication organization, um, if you're dealing with say an elderly parent, they mm -hmm. probably tried to take some steps to organize their medication in a way so that they could care for themselves as long as possible before somebody, you finally eventually needed help um, mm -hmm. or they needed your help. So then you're kind of looking at their organization strategy that they tried to use and then trying to help them with it or mm -hmm. take ownership of that to be able to then continue on um, caring for them, um, especially with the adherence level of their medication. We know that mm -hmm. if you're adherent to your medication, then um, disease states are going to be more stable because you're on your medication on a regular basis. And, um, at much to the dismay of the um, type A personalities and the perfectionists mm -hmm. among us, adherence is considered that you're taking your medication 80% of the time. Oh. Um, and so we're like, that doesn't sound like that's a lot of, <laughs> of room for error right? For adherence. But that mm -hmm. is how medically how adherence is defined is if you're taking your medication 80% of the time correctly, then medicine considers you being adherent to your medicine. Okay. So, so give yourself some grace. You don't have to be perfect. We reach 80% and we're good to go. But a lot of times what you've inherited that your elderly parents or an elderly patient that you're caring for um, what you inherit from them in their organization strategy is generally a pill box of some kind. Mm -hmm. And the pill boxes, there are a hundred different kinds and they've all got all kinds of bells and whistles, mm -hmm. but you're going to find things from a basic one, one square by seven little box. That's Sunday through Saturday. Right. And then you organize a week's worth of pills. And then from there, it gets a little more complicated. And from going from one little line rectangle, you get into like this big box. 
because you can have morning and night or you can have breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime for the seven days of the week. And so then you end up with like this really big box. Right. But there are a lot of medications um, for a lot of um, disease states and conditions that you don't take once a day. You take twice a day or you take three right. times a day or with every meal or something like that. And so you can't just throw them all in a Monday box and expect us to know um, right. or you know, uh, an ailing patient with memory issues or, um, or a child. Parent, right. Yeah. Or even a child to right. be able to say, I know that I'm only supposed to take one of the blue ones now. And then I take one of the blue ones at lunch. And then I take one of the blue right. ones at bedtime. You know, if they're all in the box and I'm going to take all of them at one time and then the box is empty and what do you do? So right. there is a reason to have those, those time frame boxes and it ends up being a bigger contraption but it gives you more control over, you know, at breakfast, we take, we take the pills in the morning box. And then when dinner time gets here, we're going to take the supper time box and then bedtime, there's the bedtime medicine. Right. And so it gives you a, a visual to be able to separate it out and then trust the system a little more to say, well, if there's no pills in the morning box then we know you already took them. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to take any more medicine until the next time. Right. Um, and then there are some boxes and the bells and whistles just get all kinds of fancy. I even found one that had Bluetooth connection to your phone so that the phone <laughs> would know if you opened the box to take pills out of it. Like you're going to be spending fancy. a pretty penny on things <laughs> like that, but like mm -hmm. they're available to you. Right. Um, there's even a set that's like a 31 day pill organizer. So you can put the entire month in the little box and each box has four little squares so if today is the 24th so mm -hmm. on your little medicine calendar you pull out the box of the 24th and you have a more like a breakfast lunch dinner bedtime box in that little line and it has two ends one end is green and one end is red if it's green it means it still has medicine in it and it has an alarm on it that'll say ding 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 it's lunchtime you need to take your lunchtime medicines and you pull out the box that's the for the 24th and you take the lunchtime medicines and you right. put it back in and as soon as that day is over with you flip it over so when you've got um patients or um especially they're probably going to be your parents who are dealing with signs and symptoms of dementia or alzheimer's or parkinson's related mm -hmm. dementia or all of those things that affect their memory and they don't know what day it is they don't know what time of day it is and those things can get really frustrating because they're always asking you they they kind of revert back to like what my five-year-old is doing right now what time is it mommy what time is it mommy mm -hmm. what time is it because she right. doesn't read a clock yet but she like knows that time passes and like different right. day times of the day are labeled by by numbers and and labels Labels that we call it it's morning or it's afternoon things like that mm -hmm. so it gives you that visual to say green means it's still today and I still have medicine to take red means that that was yesterday and I don't need to take anything out of that box anymore so it's a nice little visual obviously the intensity to organize all of that mm -hmm. you're only organizing it once a month but it's going to be kind of intensive to yeah. be able to do a whole entire month's worth of medicine um, and if you're in a situation where you're going to the doctor a lot and they like to change things around to be like, don't take that anymore. I'm going to give you this new thing. Then you got to go through all the things and pull it all out, which is right. different than if you're just doing it by the week to say, right. okay, whatever's left in the prescription bottle, I'll put that aside and we won't fill up the next box with the old thing. We'll just use the new thing. Right. And so, sometimes if you don't, if you're not to that point, like we're going to talk about in a little bit of synchronization, mm -hmm. you may have all of this, if you don't have your pills synchronized, you're not going to have 31 of it to do right. things. So you would have to get it into that synchronization. Yeah, absolutely. Do. That does make a big difference into it. And then, um, the, there are some, um, so a lot of pharmacies, a lot of retail pharmacies sell, uh, timer caps. So it sticks or clips on to the lid of your prescription vial. Okay. And then you can set a timer for it to say, this medication I have to take twice a day. I want to take it at eight in the morning and eight at night. And you set the timer and then the beeper on that bottle starts beeping when the okay. alarm goes off to say, you need to take the medicine in this bottle right now. <laughs> and so the, the, the complicated part is, is if you got like a tray full of, of like bottles and they all got timers on them and you're like trying to hear, like, that's kind of what I imagine. We like, I'm listening to all my pill bottles. Is the <laughs> 
<laughs> that's kind of like the, the humorous visual in my head, but that may be something where, you know, the alarm starts going off and you're like, Oh, I know. And the bottle that's alarming, that's the bottle you need to take. You don't need to take right. anything extra. Um, so that can be helpful. Now, if there's a lot of bottles to go around, that's going to be, you got to purchase one for each thing. And that can be kind of a lot. Um, but they are available. Um, if, if it, if it's reasonable and affordable for, for the organization system that you're, that you're working on or right. wanting to set up. Um, and then generally the last thing I like to talk about is like the pill lockers and some of them work. Um, there is a type of pill organizer and it organizes 28 days worth of medicines in kind of like this little donut thing, okay. donut shape. It's round and it, you can set up to, six different dosing times. Um, now having to take different medicines at six times to six different times during the day, that's a very intense medication mm -hmm. regimen where it may be, you got to take this one medicine before breakfast and before you eat anything and any other medicines. And you got to wait a certain amount of time. Right. You got to take these other things. You got to take this one before lunch and then you got to take this one after lunch. So there are a lot of um, very complicated dosing regimens that would require that many times of day right. to take medicine, but it'll store up to six and then it won't actually let you open it until one of those alarm times where it's saying it's time for your medicine. Right. Then it will let you open it. It won't let you open it at other times. So again, when you have um, a situation where someone you're caring for is, um, having memory problems. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's usually one of the times where we really get concerned about double dosing is they're right. like, they take their medicine, then they forget they take their medicine. So they go take it again and then they've doubled up. And it, yeah. and so that it locking in that fashion allows um, that to be prevented in a lot of cases. Um, but then there are just like the regular, there's like, it looks like, um, pill boxes stuck to, like pill bottles stuck together and then it's got like a clamp and like a lock on the end where okay. you can just lock up um potentially dangerous or potentially abused medications um if you live in a high crime area and you know somebody's on a medication that might be highly desirable for somebody who might want to come steal it from you um mm -hmm. or if you have to worry about other family members or other caregivers that aren't quite as trustworthy um right. we don't like talking about those things but, but i had a conversation happen. yeah i had a conversation with somebody yesterday who was like i can't believe this person this close to me took my medicine while I was in the hospital recovering from surgery and in a medic medication induced coma because they had to put cement in my spine. Like mm -hmm. then uh, someone very close to her who's supposed to be caring for her and she's supposed to go home with after she, after the recovery right. was stealing her medicine. So we don't like talking about that because we really want all the people that we love to be very really trustworthy and they'll do everything that we want to do. And they have the same, um, good outlook for everyone else that's involved in the situation, but sometimes it's not always that case. So those lockers are, um, are a way to be able to lock up medications where there's a combination or it has a key. And so one, um, strangers can't get to your stuff. Um, right. and then to, um, other caregivers and people that may be coming in and out of your house or the home of, um, the, the loved one you're caring for, if it is a, an, an ailing adult, um, who may be living independently, but you're kind of helping with the medicine stuff. Um, if there's other people coming in and out of their house, they're not getting into mischief and, and stealing medication. Um, so right. it, it's, a, so it it's keeps a, everybody safe. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it yeah. really does. Locked option, it does. Um, um, and so, and to... like I said, unfortunately, it is an option you have to think about a lot of times, especially if there is a situation or a chronic situation where a um, a highly dangerous or an easily abusable medication is available um, that you're having to constantly replenish with refills or prescriptions from the doctor for you know your family member that you're caring for. Okay. Okay, so the different pill boxes, and then I do know, and, and I'm going to throw out 
Um, this week has been so busy with so much great content and information from others that have been on. This next week is a, it's called a free week, kind of like we don't have a topic, but we, we have different things each day. And I'm going to kind of compi compile all of my favorite ones that I have at my house because I have a zillion different types of cases. <laughs> yeah. um, and you spoke to the one that I can't wait to show everybody, but it's the one that it pops out per day because that's very mm. nice and convenient if you are, you know, a mom of a younger special needs kiddo and you're the one controlling it, but you travel, you know, and you're on the run, mm -hmm. you know, to the grocery store or out to dinner or whatever. It's nice because you don't have to take the whole thing. The days pop off. Mm -hmm. And then it's just the one, it's the one tube. So I will throw up pictures of those. And then I have some other ones like that crush them, but also hold them. So like if you, mm -hmm. if you, they need to be crushed, but you need to have them with you, it's like a pill crusher holder <laughs> yeah yeah um, where it's yeah it like it's not just the the pieces that crush it together but then like the powder falls into like this little container and you just like seal it tight and yeah. then when you get to where you need to be or if you're out for lunch and it needs to be like sprinkled on the food before you start eating then you can just like open it and it's yeah. all collected um yeah. So there are some, there are some really cool things and I haven't, I'm going to investigate after this. I want to see all of those. I, I don't have any with alarms on it, but <laughs> I think that's like awesome. Like if it talks mm -hmm. at you and stuff. So yeah. I want to check, I want to check those out definitely. So would those be all of kind of under that category of our old standard fashion type of, you know, pill boxes? Yeah, those are probably going to be the things again, like if you've got um, an aging parent that now is needing some assistance due to um, maybe mobility issues that they can't get around as well, or they've lost their ability to drive because of vision issues, or they've lost um, some memories, so they're needing some assistance to like right. stay on track, you're probably going to inherit their organization system. And just because of the rapid advancement of technology, yet mm -hmm. their slow progression in their, their aging and health. Um, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's, everybody's years pass at the same rate. Um, even though there are certain right. periods of life where we're like, man, time's just flying. Like a, a second is a second, a minute's a minute. Um, but technology has far surpassed their rate of aging. So they're probably going to come in with what were those old school, um, or the very, manual, um, tactile organization skills. They're not going to be digital at this point. Um, right. because the digital things just came about so rapidly that they just haven't advanced into it yet. And they're right. Um, they're that's like, more your caregivers, of, obviously that are structuring all of those. Yeah, things. yeah. When, when you finally take on the burden and you're getting to the point where maybe they don't have as much input into it and you need to do it your way. So you are, because you're 100% responsible for it, then you can pick any tool you want to. Um, but right. a lot of times when you kind of start stepping in and there's that transition period where they're still wanting to be independent, but you're kind of assisting. And then the, the decision-making kind of slowly right. and gradually turns over to the caregiver from the individual. Um, you know, that transition period, you're going to have to be working with what they're comfortable with because they're still part of the decision-making process. Right. And they have the ability at any time to make those decisions and you get to decide for yourself. Or if you're just really persuasive and you're just really good at that and can convince them to use your new system that may be digital, um, right. then good for you. But I right. know like, I, I love, see, I love I the see, ones see, though that, lock it, you know, that either that lock it till that time. Cause I think that that can be a huge, huge issue mm -hmm. of, especially with aging loved ones, not as much with obviously children, because you know, mm -hmm. their, their parents should be obviously monitoring that they shouldn't right. have access to those alone. But for our aging loved ones, that is such a big thing. So it's awesome that technology has come that far to have things that are locked that mm -hmm. way. Now I know that you did some awesome investigating of, the different like digital apps and tools or should we go into medication synchronization and um, we can talk about the synchronization because okay. medication synchronization is going to make the organization part of the mm -hmm. physical pills so much easier um and when we talk about medication synchronization that's really a mouthful um lots of letters and syllables um <laughs> but it's basically where you work with the pharmacist mm -hmm. to get your refills lined up so you can pick 
them all up at the pharmacy at the same time. And if you happen to live in an area where, or a state where it's allowed for pharmacies to make home deliveries or like mail deliveries mm -hmm. to you, then it, this, it's even better to get your medication right. synchronized so that they're all coming at one time. They all go empty at the same time. Um, they making sure that the doctors are writing the same number of refills. So this one doesn't have five and this one has three and you got to call the doctor two months early on the first one before the second one even runs out, all of that right. stuff, getting it all lined up. Um, medication synchronization can be, can make organizing, organizing medication for yourself and for someone else or the entire family when you've got like kids going all 400 different directions and you like as the mom and you got to maintain the household if you can get everything synchronized and you make one trip to the pharmacy and pick up everything you need and you know nothing is missing um then when you get home you can organize and perfect and let your type a go wild to get everything straight yeah. um without having to make return and you know having to keep mm -hmm. a list of right. um of pills i remember like one of the things that really drove synchronization home to me um was several years ago let's see my youngest baby's three now so this was probably about four years ago um there i uh, had a couple an elderly couple that came to my pharmacy and they lived kind of a far long way away i live out in the boonies in georgia and um, they lived kind of up in the mountains and they didn't like to drive and they made their weekly errand run to town once a week to buy groceries to make their doctor's appointments to get gas in their car to pick up their medicines and so but so they were organized in that fashion, but they were so disorganized in the minutia of like, these are morning pills, these are nighttime pills. They would bring me Ziploc bags of all of their pill bottles and be like, here's all of our medicine from home. Cause most doctors make you bring in your pill bottles so they can like see everything. Right, right. So they would always take them to their appointments and they would bring them to me and say, here's all my pill bottles. Tell, fill, fill what I need that will get me until my trip back to town next week. And so as the pharmacist and then my technicians in my pharmacy, we're spending our time counting the pills that were left in their pill bottles to determine, right. do you have at least seven days worth of medicine in this bottle before you are going to come back to come back and bring these same bottles to me next week? for me to then do this again. Mm -hmm. And we did that. We did that week after week after week. And it was probably two and a half years that we did this for them mm -hmm. until, um, the wife passed away and then his, their children finally decided to intervene where, you know, dad was like, I got it. I got myself. I've got mom. Stop worrying about us. Like I can handle it. And right. that was how they were handling it. And we were doing our best to handle it and make sure that they were compliant with their medicine and they weren't running out of stuff and they didn't have extra stuff that they didn't need. And then finally, when mom died, the kids were like, dad, we, you need us to help you. Right. And then they finally intervened and got, and got a new system for them to be able to take care of it. But mm -hmm. that was one of the places where I was going, we need synchronization so bad. And at that time, four years ago, insurances weren't on board with that. They were like, if you forget your medicine, then uh, we ain't got to pay for it. So we don't feel bad. Um, right. Literally, that's how insurance is. Yeah, because you were about. saying that now you do get notification, like if mm -hmm. you can um, do a whole month's dose, right? Does that come to you on your computer mm -hmm. screens? If you can do like a, you can dose we it have out? A, we have a system um, a lot, depending on which pharmacy you go to and different chain pharmacies, retail pharmacies have contracts with different insurance companies and different third parties to be able to offer services like that. Um, and so the ones where I work, when we do have that, that service available and we have that contract through certain insurances, we will get a notification through, through their software that says this patient may be eligible for synchronization. And it gives me this, like, it gives me all of the meds that the insurance has paid for and I match them up in my system. And it gives me kind of a plan to say, mm -hmm. it's going to take, you can get their medication synchronized in one month 
or it may take three months to get their medication synchronized because a lot of times insurances don't want to pay for medicines too early right. but if we're going through their synchronization program then they'll say you know what hey we'll we'll prorate you a copay for mm -hmm. 17 days worth of medicine so you can get everything lined up for the next month right and i know that i have been approached with um for some medications that aren't as i guess have any strict regulations around them where if you on, if you're on them on a regular basis you can actually get them sometimes for like a 60 day supply or a 90 day supply mm -hmm. 90 day supplies are very popular mm -hmm. um and it that's that's where we go into that adherence that 80 percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um if you take 80 percent of 90 and then chop that up into little bits mm -hmm. you have a greater margin of error if you take 80 percent of 30 80 percent of 30 80 percent of 30 because it may not be exactly 80 percent it may be 80 percent one month and the next month mm -hmm. it may be 69 percent and then you've got you know 78 percent and so you've got a greater margin of error because you have to make more trips to the pharmacy right, right. um and more trips to the pharmacy with everything else that you've got going on mm -hmm. just may not make the priority list if you run to town and then like you got to get back at a certain time or you're having to haul kids to come with you mm -hmm. and just sometimes like the meltdown happens when you got three errands left and you just got to skip them and go home right and if one of those errands you know, my son is pharmacy, on like nine medications and you know what i'm saying like if you're running back and then if you got to run back again and then if you have to you know mm -hmm. run back again it's just it's not it's not enjoyable it's not fun and then you're like oh i only have one pill left you know um and then you can get some mm -hmm. of them it seems like some some of them are easier to get on more of an auto refill as well like for some mm -hmm. i don't know if it's under the different actually distributors that are making like the generics if they're the ones who decide that but it seems like some of them generally go, the pharmacy they all go on an auto can they all go on an auto fill um, so from my experience, we can put anything on autofill as long as the insurance allows it. Okay. So I live in Georgia. Um, the Medicaid program for Georgia does not allow their patients to go on auto refill. Okay. They're one of those insurance plans that say, you know what, if you forget about your medicine, that's less money we have to pay. So we're just not going to like worry about it. Right. Um, and so, so those patients aren't allowed on autofill. So we try to do everything we can to like make sure they're set up for reminders um, via text messages or phone calls or emails mm -hmm. or something that, that is available. Or like if they are very tech savvy, being able to use a digital tool to remind them to be like, oh, I got four pills left. I probably should go ahead and call the pharmacy and, and have them start working on it. Even if I can't get to the pharmacy on the day that I ordered it, at least in four days, maybe I can um right. and then some um some medicare um if you get um medicare part b so like b as in boy it's the part that pays for a lot of inhalation medications um diabetes testing supplies those kinds of things okay. they do not allow autofill even though the drug plans through medicare do so if you have a humana plan that's a part d for drug or an aetna plan part d for drug those plans do allow autofill medicare by itself does not mm -hmm. um so some of that is decided by the insurances mm -hmm. other times um some pharmacies are strict about we won't put control substances on on autofill so you may there may be a legitimate reason that somebody needs um an Ativan on a regular basis, like month after month after month. Mm -hmm. But the pharmacies, because it is a controlled substance um, nationwide, pharmacies may choose that that one can't go on autofill. You have to call me and ask for it. Or right. some doctors are really strict that they say, we won't write you refills on controls. Um, even though lower level controls are allowed refills, maybe doctors won't write them. They make you call for it or come in and pick it up. For them here to get we it, have so to not only go in, so you can't even, the doctor can't even order it via computer. In Wisconsin, you have to take your prescription, your paper prescription, mm. hand it to the pharmacist, they fill it, you have to show your ID, 
and, you know, sign for everything as well. So, you know, those kind of things obviously couldn't be the mail yeah. order and the refill mm-hmm. um, with that. And I think, you know, before we, before we hopped on live, we were chatting about that. It really depends on your, your pharmacy. And this is where we talk about having a relationship with your pharmacist, you know, asking them, yeah. you know, what services are offered here? Who offers, you know, do you offer any kind of mail order program? Do you offer, you know, can you help me get things synchronized? Because you guys are the ones that know yeah. best to be able yeah. to. Look and it a up. lot of that, again, is, is what, what services does your pharmacy offer? And then if you have a good relationship and you have a good pharmacist, then the pharmacist is going to care and want to help you synchronize. Um, even if it's not something that, um, I mean, I was synchronizing medications for patients like the patients I said where they were bringing me their plastic mm-hmm. bags and I was really wanting to like be able to synchronize this for them. Um, theirs was just so complicated. We never, we, it never worked out the way we wanted it to. But, um, but there were times where I was synchronizing medicines for people at, on my own time. Like no insurance was paying us for that service for those people. Right. Um, my company didn't care that it took me extra time um, to, to do that for them, but I cared because that's my job. My job is to care. And so, um, and so I was synchronizing it for them to be like, you know what, we're going to try to like squeeze these refills. We're going to like refill these a little bit early or like eat these a little bit later to try to get them to all line up. And it might've taken three or four months because again, those insurances unfortunately have the final say to say, we're not going to pay eight days early. We only want to pay four days early. So you got to like work within their windows, but being able to like get them, eat them closer and closer and closer together um, without patients actually missing doses. Um, I don't want you to wait five days and not take your medicine for five days just because we're trying to synchronize your medicine. Like that's not the goal. Um, I don't need you to use up your 80% of adherence, like in the first the first week just because you're waiting for everything to line up right but there were times where like I didn't have insurance tools that helped me with a worksheet to like highlight you know what what kind of plan I could be on Um, I was doing it all in my head and all on scratch paper to synchronize people so if you got a good pharmacist that cares right then they're going to be willing to help you whether the they have a lot of tools or incentive from insurance or or their employer to help you out if they're a good pharmacist they're going to want to help you out and if they don't care to help you out you might need to find a new pharmacist right um, a new, a new pharmacy yeah <laughs> and um, i don't know so how- there are oh go on good <laughs> i was just gonna say that um and i don't know how it is as much in adult facilities but you know obviously in wisconsin we have one of the leading you know children's hospitals here which we have a pharmacy that is inside of all of that all of the children's hospitals okay that mm. are here so it's not a you know what i'm saying it's not a walgreens it's, it's actually called skywalk pharmacy but their mm-hmm. their campaign is that what they do differently too is that they um, they do a lot of mixtures, you know, when we talk about those, those unique compounds, like compounds. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, because you're dealing with a specialty hospital where you have kids from all over the United States coming for rare conditions. And I'm sure Emory in Atlanta, I'm sure they deal mm-hmm. with some of that too, because they're another top rank facility, you know, where mm-hmm. they they offer that and they will offer the compounds and kind of the meal program. And they really try to get in there with the patients and sit down with them, especially for complex medical kids, you know, to mm-hmm. break that down. But, you know, um, as I have been going through the aging loved one process with my grandma, I don't know if in the elderly care world that that happens as much for our elderly loved ones that you have, you know, people in the hospitals that are coming in to be like, hey, let me teach you and your family how to synchronize these. Because, you know, sometimes an elderly Mm -hmm. person, I mean, they can be on 20 different medications in a day, you know, and all of those straight. And so, um, you know, I see a big push within our children's facilities, but I don't know if that same push is there for elderly care. And then obviously that's even a more confusing time because if they're right. going home themselves or they don't have yeah. someone caring. And it's a so. little harder in the, for like the aging patients, um, again, because of the whole, um, legal adult HIPAA privacy yeah. thing where mm-hmm. it's your kid. <laughs> They're a minor. Right. So for minors, I'm allowed to talk to the parents and the caregivers without all this extra paperwork. 
mm-hmm. when when tragedy strikes and it's suddenly the the son and the daughter in law who are having to do the the Karen. medication the like the health care errands for the parent and it all happens in in a whirlwind and they don't have the right paperwork and they don't have the power of attorney and they don't have like all of these things that need to be signed. Um, then it's like, my hands are tied. Like, what can I do? Cause like my heart goes out and I do to the level that I can, but then right. like, I can't just start bearing all the information unless there's the documentation because that's, that's like legal liability. Right. Um, and so in a lot of cases, there's not, um, there's not in the areas where I live. Now there may be other areas that are more cutting mm-hmm. edge cause I'm kind of in backwoods Georgia and like, there are a lot of things still here that are very backwoods. Right. Um, but there may be other places that are more cutting edge where there's a lot of that going on and they have the funds and they have the, the demand for somebody to be very involved in saying, Hey, we're about to, take mom home from the hospital and we want to make sure she gets to stay at home and doesn't have to end up in a nursing home. Right. Um, so what, what tools can you train me with to be able to like make sure she stays at home and doesn't end up in long-term care? Um, that that's not happening where I live. Um, I get a lot of phone calls and I am dealing with a lot of family members of my aging patients um, as, as kind of through that transition where like daughter's right. coming in with mom. So mom is able to give me like verbal permission to be like, yeah, you can talk to Susie about my stuff. Cause she's going to be like, she's going to have to explain it to me four more times when we get home. Cause I'm not going to remember Right. then like I have that permission, but like when it is a, a tragedy situation where mom has a stroke and now she can't talk and like, what do you do? Cause you didn't have all the paperwork in plan in place. Um, right. And that, probably why that is harder in adult facilities. You know what I'm saying? You don't. Yeah. Cause you're, you're they're always worried about that privacy issue and right. you could be completely unconscious. And if you don't have the right documentation in mm-hmm. place to say, who's going to, who's going to be in charge of your medical directive, who's going to be in charge of your power of attorney. If these catastrophic things happen to you, if those aren't in place and the catastrophic thing does happen, the hospital's like, I can't talk to you because you're not, your name's not on the paper. Right. Right. And you're going, this is stupid. Um, and it, it can be also the same thing that as you have children that, um, as they age past 18, yeah, they may still have have disabilities. They may still have need to be a dependent and have care long into their, their adult life based on legal age, sometimes if you don't have the right paperwork and documentation Mm -hmm. ready to go when they turn 18, then a lot of facilities and a lot of hospitals are like, my hands are tied. They're 18 years old. What am I going to do? And you're like, well, dang, I've been taking care of them for 18 years of their life. Like, who do you think I am? I didn't pick them up off the street. (laughs) So that a lot of that does get frustrating. And I know that's kind of off topic, but those are the things. But that's a whole not, that's a whole nother topic. Cause that's like 17 years, nine months. You need to be in court. You need to be in court at 17 years, nine months so that you have that when they turn, when they turn 18. But I think the same as you, you know, you live in a very remote area. Now Mm -hmm. I live also in a very remote area. So, you know, my next door neighbor is a cornfield. Now I don't want chasing <laughs> cows. Like you got cows that you guys chase. <laughs> You're trying to find a cow. I don't have any cows like right down the road, but they, I mean, they're a little bit farther, you know, down the road that way. But I see that even out here, you know, we have, we have like one, you know, one little town pharmacy and one Walgreens, like, can you imagine a place where there's only one, <laughs> like, all around? Yes, yes, I can. I live in a town like that. We have, we have one mom and pop pharmacy and yep. then one Rite Aid. Okay. And there's like no, there's no other competition. Like, there's not a Kroger. There's not <laughs> like, do y'all you know? Do you know what Kroger is in Wisconsin? No, so we don't have either one of those. We have okay. we have CVS or we have Walgreens, yeah. and then like some of our grocery stores and Sam's Club owned through Walmart does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Walmart. like we, I don't. There's not a Walmart in my county. Right. Um, 
And so, because I'm so, I'm so far out in the woods, right. like we don't go by cities, we go by counties. So mm-hmm. in my county, there is not a Walmart. <laughs> um, so like, there's not even that competition for mm-hmm. like the one chain pharmacy that's the Rite Aid. And it's just like the mom and pop place. Right. Um, and what I found though is, is that here, though everything closes, like it, like you can't get your, your pharmaceuticals like after eight o'clock. Yeah. You know, we're <laughs> in, in Milwaukee, like in our city you know, there's almost half of them, almost half of them, or, or even more are all open 24 hours, mm-hmm. you know, and you're able to get prescriptions and stop in and like your everything on Sunday, six o'clock. That's yeah. it. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, it is. And, and so, like, you got to drive two hours to find the place that's going to be open after six o'clock right. on a Sunday afternoon. Cause we're not working on Sundays if we can help it. Right. So, I mean, if you yeah. can work with like, let's say your loved one does go to a hospital facility or a child. So through like our hospital, since that's where our children's hospital, my son is, I do have the opportunity that even though I live in a small County, they mm-hmm. would do that mail order program. So the bottom mm-hmm. line to all of it is you have to ask mm-hmm. because every single place is completely different. Every pharmacy is different, you know, yeah. hospital, what they're, you know, willing to synchronize, what they're willing to mail out. But mm-hmm. definitely that helps the organization process to be a whole lot easier. Yeah. In that. Yeah. And it, it can feel kind of stressful. And there are, there are some, concentric circles that go into that to be like, if I'm going to get all of my medicine at one time, then I might have to change my budget to make sure Mm -hmm. I can pay that prescription bill all at one time. If you're going to get 90 days and like your copays kind of multiply and become like Mm -hmm. this funky little multiplication of like one month to three months, Mm -hmm. then you may still have to go, okay, I got a budget. I got to make sure I can pay all of that at one time. Because especially if you're dealing with like a hospital, specialty pharmacy, or, or a retail chain pharmacy, and they are providing this service for you and working with you, they don't do medicine on credit. Right. Mom and pop might, but like most of the places where that are going to have a lot of resources to be able to provide these services, they're not going to give you medicine on credit. So if you got right. copays, you're going to have to pay the copays. So then you kind of have to plan out to say, okay, I got a budget to buy my, my, organization kit. I got a plan. I got a budget to be able to pay for all the medicine at one time. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it, then it gets easier from there. Like the first time you do it, it's going to be really intensive and going to take a lot of effort to make sure all of those ducks are in a row. But, um, but then getting going forward, it gets so much easier each time, each time you do it. Right. And so, Oh, go on. (laughs) I was just going to say, even though like we're talking about living out in the middle of nowhere, but that doesn't necessarily mean mean that um, you always have to use the the old time ways to do things. There's plenty of digital tools that Mm -hmm. can help you, even though like we, even though we live out in the middle of nowhere, we still got digital tools. Like we're doing this on the internet. So if you get the internet, wherever you live, you can, there are digital tools that can help you with medication organization. Um, cause I know a lot of times they're like, I'm kind of that in between where like, I really like digital tools. I think they do really cool things, but mm-hmm. there's other times where I was like, I just got to do this on pen and paper, um, right, right. <laughs> you know? And so I'm kind of like in that in between generation. Um, but the digital tools that are out there are, um, are pretty amazing and pretty, uh, um, extensive in what okay. you can do with them. And a majority of them don't cost much or if anything at all, I actually found some free ones when we were talking okay. about this. Um, so I was like, well, I was like, this is free. Really? Like I don't have to pay anything for this and it's going to do all of this for me. This is amazing. So, so they really are out there. Um, okay. and so um, one of the, the medication, there's two medication, um, that are kind of like overall organizers that I really like. Um, one okay. is called are, Medi- are apps. Yes. They're apps on my phone. Okay. <laughs> right, let me, I'll show it to you. Uh, that's fun. So one is called MediSafe, M E D I S A F E. And it is available on Apple and Android. Oh, and I'm an so, Apple user. <laughs> yeah, me too. And so I was trying to make sure I was like, if these, if there's like something on Android that I don't know about, like I, you know, right. just, they had to. If you have Android tools that are like Android only, mm-hmm. please tell everybody because oh, yeah. I just know the Apple tools and I try to find out if they're like on only one or on both. Okay. Um, but it's called MetaSafe, 
And so I tried to set it up kind of like a fake person and I didn't get very far, but it kind of looks like this. If you tilt in your screen like this little. Can you see it? Where like it has the squares. It has four oh. squares for like morning, afternoon, evening, and nighttime. Okay. And so, um, so you can add your med list, like you add all of your medicines and their strengths and how many pills you have to take a day and what time of day. And then the app will organize it into the little boxes and you can set it up to alarm to be like, it's time for your afternoon dose. And then your phone will start buzzing or beeping or ringing or something okay. for you to go in. And then you have to like tell it to be like, okay, I took, I took my afternoon meds today. And it will keep a report. So we talked about that adherence. It'll mm -hmm. keep a report of saying, you know what? There was like four days this week. You missed, you missed your, your bedtime dose. Um, and so okay. you can see the chart of, um, you know, whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it for someone else, then, um, then it's a reminder. You can, you can program it all in there. It will mm -hmm. let you program multiple profiles. So you can have, so if you got to take care of mom and you got to take care of dad, or if you got to take care of you and the three kids at home, like mm -hmm. you can add everybody in there and it'll, everybody will have their own profile and their own little medicine cabinet. Okay. Um, it will also let you um, record measurements of all kinds. So not just like body measurements, like this is how tall I am and this is how much I weigh, all of that stuff. But if you're having to check blood sugars, if you're, if you get, um, cholesterol measurements from the doctor, if you have to get, um, other type of lab values measured at the doctor, then you can record them in and it will track it for you. Uh, it will, you can put appointments in there. You can put doctor's contact information in there. And it even has a little diary section for you to be able to type notes, to be like, today, you know, especially, I like journaling type things, especially when you're starting new medications or have major changes to therapy, um, mm -hmm. especially when there's multiple medications involved, to be able to say, you know what, this changed and now now I'm feeling this way, or mom is ex exhibiting these, these symptoms new now that we changed this in her medicine, mm -hmm. to be able to chart. So it's got like a diary section. You can record anything you want to. You just like type notes, whether it's reminders or questions for the doctor and what the doctor said as his answer, or um, things that you're noticing um, on the inside if you're doing it about yourself, or, or things that you're noticing of... Um, progressing disease states of, especially with dementia, as new symptoms start to show up or things like that. Um, okay. So it lets you record a lot of things. The other one that's similar to that, that has a few more features is called Care Zone. Care Zone. And mm -hmm, um, it's, it, the icon has a little owl on it. Um, it's called Care Zone. And the downside to this one is they advertise their own services where they'll ship you a month's worth of vitamins or they'll like want to mail you the little packets of things. Oh, um, okay. and so if you can get past like their self advertisement part, um, it has a couple more features. It has everything that, that the MediSafe does where you can add in all of your medicines into your medicine cabinet and then it'll set up reminders and track if you've missed doses. It lets you track symptoms of certain things. Um, it will, it's really cool because it will access your camera and you can create the medicine list by just taking a picture of the medicine bottle. Oh. And so, cool. so that way you're not having to remember like, oh, is the Synthroid in my milligrams or micrograms? I'm not sure. Like, you know, those kinds of things. Like you just okay. take a picture of it, of the label and it will compile the information and make your medicine list. And then you create the schedule with it. Nice. Um, and so it will do the symptom tracker in the same way with like the symptoms and the labs you can add. Um, it has like an appointment and a scheduler thing. It keeps notes where you can keep track of, um, of questions. Like it's just kind of like free text. You just like okay. type it in it you want to and it will also save the pictures of your insurance cards which is one of the things like insurance is like a big soapbox of mine but like I you know we're now at the end of March so I don't have as much of it but in January people were coming to me with like handfuls of insurance cards to be like I don't know which one is the right one but I know my insurance changed for the new year so like is one of these the right one so I like it's all fixed and so I'm having to sort through be like this one's for dental this one's for vision this one's last year's you know all of that stuff 
Um, you can take pictures of them. Keep your insurance okay. cards in there. If Medicare is involved, it'll store your, your Medicare information. Um, that one is, ve is very much designed for, for caring for elderly patients. Okay. Um, an elderly and person. so, yeah, where the MetaSafe will, can kind of be for anybody, um, okay. the Care Zone is, is very much designed for caring for um, el elderly patients or, or aging parents in that respect. Um, and that one will also let you do multiple profiles where if you got to do mom and dad or, okay. um, you know, you, you've got like multiple family members that you're trying to manage all at one time. Um, so that one, um, let's see, was there anything else about that one? Um, oh, and it will, it will store other photos for you. So if it's like mom has a rash, I'm going to take a picture of it. And then like, so then you can watch it day after day to be like, Okay. You know, oh, oh, it's getting worse, you know, and then you can show the doctor be like, this is day one. And then this is day three. And now this was this morning before we decided to come see you. Um, okay. So then, then you've, you've got like bukus of documentation. So for us perfectionist types and type A types where we need to document everything, like it is there, that is it. Right. And so, like I said, the only downside is that you have to get past their self advertisements for their boxes of vitamins and their services and all of their things. So do those just pop up or are you just they do. The very beginning? Yeah, there um there's one little icon at the bottom that is like their store where then you can like scroll through and like shop their stuff if you want to buy their vitamins. But then every once in a while, like as you're like moving from one section to another, there'll be like this little pop up to be like, did you know we do do da 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 and then you just like have to hit X to get back to what you mm -hmm. were doing. Okay. Um, so both of those are free. Um, the MetaSafe is, I guess, is the most free because you don't have to worry about the advertisement thing popping up. But then, but like CareZone, you don't pay them anything for the app. Um, you just, if you choose to like buy stuff from them. Okay. Um, so, so the, both of those, I really liked all of the things where it kind of stays all in one place. And then you right. can set up how much does it need to notify you, like remind you about your appointments, remind you about your dosing mm -hmm. times. Um, remind you to check your blood sugar, remind you for all of those things. Um, and then being able to save like the contact information. So if you're like, Oh, I got to figure out how to get in touch with the cardiologist. Well then right. we're not flipping through, you know, we're not having to Google his name and we're not having to flip through mom's old phone book where she kept all her contacts written down in her swirly handwriting. You know, you can like put it in, mm -hmm. um, you can like, it'll be there and then you can like, click the button and like we're calling the cardiologist because we got a question it's all there mm -hmm. um so so if you're very again when you get to the point where you can convince them to let everything be digital or you get to the place where you are the sole decision maker right. because they can't have any more input and you want a digital tool those are two that i really like um and are you're not having to jump multiple multiple apps all the features are there to be able to, to, to manage all of that. Okay. Um, so there, there's two others. One, um, is a paid app. It's called simple S Y M P L E. And it is basically a symptom tracker. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. and so you can do up to five symptoms for free. And then if there's other things you need, I think it's like a $10 app. So it is kind of okay. pricey, but if it is one of those things where like you're really needing to track, like, is this, or is this disease progressing mm -hmm. or are you, you're tracking multiple things, especially um, when it comes to like Parkinson's and dementia type symptoms of, is this getting worse? Or we think it might be this condition. And now these new symptoms have showed up being able, it's got an, an sane list of symptoms of all kinds of things and it's not just elderly patient symptoms um if you needed to to track symptoms to figure out if you're pregnant or not those symptoms are in there so like so it'll you can you know just put it all in there um and now so it's ten dollars a month or is it a one-time um, it's just app. a one-time thing where you pay okay. and then you get all of these things unlocked um okay. and but it, it's another one that will save pictures so if you need to take pictures um, pictures, the pictures and then the journaling to be able to like track mm -hmm. notes and stuff are only things that you get in the paid feature. Um, but you can do up to five symptoms, um, and for free if okay. you're just 
think if you wanted to try it out. Um, but I thought it is one of those things that is, is, would be very useful again, if you're having to track mm -hmm. disease progression or, um, or change in, in certain conditions of, of yourself or, uh, watching, you know, caring for a loved one, um, that may have a very complex, uh, medical history and, and chronic conditions that are kind of compounded one on top of the other, um, okay. just due to, to the aging factor. Um, and so, cause diabetes is harder to manage as patients get older, um, heart conditions and blood pressure are harder to manage when, when, um, patients get older. Um, resistant blood pressure is a real thing mm -hmm. where I see these little scrawny old ladies who are on like six different blood pressure medicines because it, they don't look like they're unhealthy at all. They just have, there's just something about their genetics and their makeup mm -hmm. and the fact that they have progressed in age that makes their body very resistant to blood pressure medicines and having their blood pressure lowered. And we don't want them okay. to be at risk. So like, that's a real thing. So being able to track a lot of that stuff, um, especially if it's cool. compounded with other things that, um, that they may have going on due to, to aging or again, mm -hmm. some catastrophic, um, condition that like then now deemed them just unable to, to take care of themselves. Okay. But, um, but the symptom tracker and then, so that one I like for like adults mm -hmm. and then the one, a symptom tracker, a symptom tracker that I like for kids is called the kids health tracker. Okay. And you can put all of your kids in there. Um, you can, you put their birthdays in there and all, all of their like basic demographic things. Mm -hmm. And then, and you can track their symptoms in that. And it'll give you a little chart, um, of like, of what it looks like is, you know, or what we dealing with just an acute sickness where mm -hmm. like, okay, they got sick. And then I can say, I gave them this medicine for this acute thing and it went away. Or it has, is something else developing to them that we need to see a pediatrician or a specialist about these symptoms that have been around for a long time. Okay. Um, and if you're a parent of multiple children, trying to manage the health of multiple children, um, even if they're relatively healthy and they just get acute things all the time because they're in the public and they, you know, ride in the grocery buggy, uh, you know, that buggy. it's all, it's all, you know, managing multiple humans are, is very complicated. Right. So the kids health tracker puts it all in one place and that one is free. Um, okay. where you can, you can track. So if you're having to deal with, you know, somebody has got a fever and where you're, you're tracking the fever, the fever went up, we gave Tylenol, fever came down, you know, whatever. Right. Um, cause the question I get a lot and I even, I had a really long conversation with a mom the other day where they were like, we're dealing with a fever. The pediatrician told me to just wait and watch, but now I'm trying to alternate my medicines and like having to Tylenol, give Tylenol, ibuprofen. And ibuprofen, Tylenol, and ibuprofen. Yeah. How am I, what am I supposed to do? That's the app that you need to be able to say, what did I give four hours ago? Because right. it all went to hell in a handbasket. And right. then I'll give you like, okay, now it's time to give medicine. Which one do I give? I don't remember. The right. app will track it for you to be like, oh, I gave Tylenol last time. Let's give the ibuprofen this time, right. you know, and back and forth, you know, and that's something simple. And there are many more complex things that, um, that children d may deal with that require, um, long-term tracking. And, and that's an app that will, that will remember all of it for you to be able to go back history and history and be like, well, three months ago. We right. Had and it's a store um, all right. Yeah. There. And it'll just all be there and it, it's separated by kid. And you're like, it was that Johnny or was that Jimmy? I don't remember, you know? And so like you can, it'll keep them, keep them all separate. And again, if you're having to raise mm -hmm. more than one kid at a time, having something that will kind of keep mm -hmm. everybody square um, and keep you sane about like who had what at which time. Right. Um, then allows you, cause if you, if you got more than one kid, they share germs. So yeah. if Susie gets the cold, then, you know, Shelly's going to get it next week. And so then do know, you know, did you can watch the trends mm -hmm. to be able to say, yep, she got sick and now he's sick and vice versa. Or like I got sick and now they're both sick. Um, or is it something just completely new out of the blue and we really need to get it checked on by the doctor? Um, you right. know, there's lots right. of reasons to do that. And I, I like that a lot to be able to keep, keep all the kids straight. 
Um, yes. and, and so if you're an app person, if you like to use your phone, which, you know, what yeah. did they say the other day? Like kids are on their phone 11 hours of the day or something like that. Yeah. I mean, if you're an adult and you like to utilize your phone and you're not the pen and paper person, then those apps are super yeah, awesome. Are As so you were talking fun. about the tracking the kids, I'm like, we need to have that tracker app on everything our teenage children do. <laughs> Just like <laughs> have the trackers on the phone. <laughs> if yeah. we could only like track and put in like, they did this today, they did this. And this is going to yeah. be your outcome for their behavior. I, I don't know. <laughs> if, I mean, if you needed to use it as like, as like a like choice consequence, like <laughs> cause and effect type thing, like you chose to back talk me today. So now this is what happened to you afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great app. <laughs> yeah. So it'll let you free type. So you can like type anything in there you want to. Like today she was a grouchy pants. So <laughs> right. <it's> like, okay. <laughs> and see what parental advice. So if anybody is an app inventor, that would be awesome. If you could like put in there all the things that your kids do. And then it would come up with like an equation for you. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, because they don't, those, those darn kids, they don't come with like manuals. Nope. Mm -mm. You know? <laughs> but it's the right thing to do. <laughs> so on that note, we are just a hot minute over an hour. So is there anything else that you would say um, to kind of wrap this up? Any other advice with the organizational tools and strategies for caregivers? that you think could be beneficial or maybe just a Saturday night positive quote. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, well, the thing I was thinking wasn't a very positive note, but, but even though we get really creative with our organization mm -hmm. and um, you know, you get really, you get really creative with your persuasion skills to be able to convince mom to be like, mom, please let me handle this. Like, I think mm -hmm. we can get it better organized for you. Um, you know, we're always getting creative in our tactics to be able to um, have a better plan and get everybody on board with that plan and all of that stuff. Um, but my warning to everyone who gets creative with using organizational tools mm -hmm. is please make sure you follow the law. <laughs> um, if you get pulled over for speeding and they find unidentified pills in your car because they're you put them in the pill box to go to the beach rather than like leaving them in their original prescription vials and they're not labeled um the cop's not gonna care a whole lot about what or why or what's going on in your mm -hmm. personal life they only care that those pills are unidentified and you mm -hmm. can probably rattle off every single one of them be like well the synthroid is the blue one and the omeprazole is purple <laughs> and white and all of this stuff and they're not going to care because they're not going to believe you because the labels aren't on them so mm -hmm. like those are kind of the things like we get really creative and we love the system like we got the system down mm -hmm. and it's perfect mm -hmm. and it's working for everybody until you get pulled over and then it becomes a problem. Or you're traveling, like we talked about, if you're traveling, if you're getting on an airplane. Yes, you if know, you're getting on an air. airplane, they will not let you fly with anything that is unidentified. So mm -hmm. it, has to have, it has to be maintained in the bottles. Now, you may be going on the trip for a couple of weeks, um, or you may, you know, you may be gone for a week or two if you're flying somewhere or driving somewhere. So it's completely fine to take the prescription vials and then your organizer empty and then mm -hmm. organize when you get there. And then you'll have to unseparate everything back right. into their identified bottles to travel home. Um, you know, the other thing is I have a lot of people, all the pharmacies will, uh, will be glad to comply with requests for an empty labeled bottle. Be like, I got this giant bottle of gabapentin. Can I get a little bottle that I can put like six right. days worth in with a label on it so we can go to the beach mm -hmm. next week? Okay, cool. Um, I have no problem doing that. We do the same thing for, for moms who have, um, if you've got to give medication to a school nurse and you don't yeah. want to give them the whole big bottle to be like, here's a little bottle. Here's like the five days worth they're going to need. Cause you got to give them their medication every day at lunch for Monday through Friday. So mm -hmm. like, here's the little bottle that goes to the school nurse. The big bottle stays home with me. And you know, we comply with that request all the time. So if you need travel bottles um, or extra labels for traveling in that respect, then you just for law enforcement in general, whether it's highway patrol, um, or TSA at the airports, whether you're flying domestic or internationally, you got to have the medicines labeled. Mm -hmm. So don't let, don't let the type A 
personality get you so bound into the organization that you end up breaking the law and having a problem in the in the in the right. right. And as you were that saying, that, I was just thinking in your car when the pills are, you know, if you have them in the organizer, just take all the empty pill bottles and keep them, you know, in your car in the in like a Ziploc. Couldn't you do that too? Cops will, n they have to be in the bottles that identify them. They can't be just um, like beside it. See, um, I'm going to get so, arrested. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it was something as simple as like, I had a customer that had a bottle of extra strength Tylenol in her purse and the lid came off and they spilled and she thought she got them all back in the bottle. And then something happened is she got pulled over for like speeding or running a stop sign or something like that. And then he goes through the purse. Here's the bottle of Tylenol. And there was one pill down in the little zipper pocket that got missed. Even though she knew it was a Tylenol, he would not accept the fact, be like, this was not in a container to identify it. So I can't take your word that it's a Tylenol. Right. And we're like, this is, you're, you're going like, this is really dumb. But like, that's, that's how the rule they have to follow. That's the laws we have to follow. And they're not, again, they're not going to care that you can rattle off all the names and all the colors of everything right. that's in that box. If they are not in a container to identify them mm -hmm. as that by themselves. And please, for the love of all that is holy, do not put all of the pills in one bottle. Oh yeah. And mix if, them all if up. any security person finds a pill that does not look like all the other pills in the bottle that is bad it's very bad <laughs> just trust me it's bad <laughs> it's like i'm speaking from i know <laughs> just don't do it like i don't like the calls that come to me from people will be like they they have all people have all kinds of stories yeah and you've been doing this for over like, a decade now so think, yeah. <laughs> Just when I think that, like, I've heard it all, somebody comes up with something new. It's crazy. <laughs> and so just, just, like. Just take your warning. Right. Read the TSA website. Like, learn what the rules are before you mm -hmm. travel. Because when you get there, and if you get there, and then you got to unsort everything, or they're going to take your two weeks worth of medicine. Don't you don't want to go on vacation without your medicine? Right. <laughs> you know you don't want to go to cousin Susie's wedding without your medicine. Like that's bad. So like you need to like follow the rules. Right. Don't get don't don't make the the laws. Don't make your organization system so rigid that, right, that you're breaking it, the law. It, it forces you to break the laws if you're like driving down the road or flying on an airplane. Right. So you know you got it like. Got it. Learn, you got to learn all those things. And so that's like, that's not a happy Saturday night message, but right. it's like <laughs> all of these tools are wonderful. They really are. And when you find a system that works for you, it mm -hmm. feels like you won the lottery. It's right. like amazing, but you don't want it to all be ruined just because you're trying to go to the Bahamas and you didn't like know what you were, what the regulations were right because then that just ruins the Bahamas for everybody. So it's yeah. just, you know, <laughs> so it's just like, that's just my word of caution to be like, All don't right. get so absorbed in your organization system mm -hmm. that like it ruins vacation because it, it's not worth that. Um, right. you know, you got 80% wiggle room okay so but we don't want all 80 percent of that to be used up on vacation you know so mm -hmm. just perfect balance. all right <laughs> so don't get you lost in your type a you know just make sure you're following yeah. the rules with everything still um but as we wrap up tonight i want to thank you all that did tune in for this saturday night thank spending so it with me mm -hmm. and cynthia and if you would like to catch any of our other broadcasts um podcasts youtube tutorial videos or any of that you guys can always head over to the onairadvocate.com that's onairadvocate.com and you can find them all right up in the right hand corner of the website so with that i'm super excited we got through a whole bunch more stuff <laughs> <laughs> tonight our little party online um, for our Saturday night. And like I said, next week will be coming up kind of a free week. So please make sure that you are tuning in and checking out the Facebook, you know, page each day because it will be different topics. And I know me and um, Cynthia are already talking about some stuff coming up for next month, some changes in healthcare and whatnot that will be back on. So yeah. 
looking forward to that. And I hope that you enjoy what, what's your weather going to be tomorrow? Cause ours, um, you know what? I don't even know. I worked seven days in a row before this. And so uh, I, like this morning, I'm surprised I could even make English. So like I recovered, I recovered well for tonight, but I haven't even worried about what, what's going on. Well, you know, if it was going to snow there, you guys might be thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I don't think that's in the forecast. The other thing is like my kitchen is like in shambles because of a remodel so it's like i don't know what's going on i don't know where i live i don't know <laughs> right right well you enjoy your sunday and thank you all again for tuning in tonight to the on-air advocate thank you. thank you cynthia and god bless everybody have a fabulous sunday bye. tomorrow <laughs> right, bye bye